Okay, right, welcome back to TFO TV and thank you for joining the Average Golfer. As you can see from behind me, this is something that I've been wanting to try for quite some time. PXG are at 4 Golf Chester, big demo day, chance to try their product and uh, I'm up next and I can't wait to get stuck in to be quite honest with you. I've seen, heard plenty, as I'm sure you have, about PXG product. But what I'm really interested in, we always talk about price with PXG product. And I want to get away from the price and I want to see what the product performs like in the hands of the average golfer. And that's what I'm going to do very, very soon. Because there's such a vast product range to look at, I'm going to be limited to what I can do in this short video today. So we're going to focus on the new Gen 2 irons. And it's 0311. And forgive me if some of the information I relay isn't perfect today. I'll do my very best as I learn along the way from the guys who are here um, from PXG. But we're going to look at four irons. I'm going to go through the custom fit process as what you would experience at one of these um, fit days, this fit process. And it's something they're very, very big on at PXG. Uh, we'll have a look at numbers. We're hooked up to TrackMan as usual. I'll see how these things perform. In the main, there's four irons in this Gen 2 category. Um, we've got the Tour, the Players, quick glance down, the XF, which I think is extra forgiveness, and the SGI, which is the super game improvement iron. And I'll find out which suits best for me, don't forget, handicap of nine. So we may end up, and I've been talking off camera, that quite often PXG mix a blend of these two sets. So that could be something that happens at the end of this fit, we shall soon find out. But I'll talk you through each individual head and kind of what's involved in what the tech is in each of those heads along the way but for now i'm going to move camera we'll get some balls hit and we'll start off maybe with the tour iron see how i get on with that have a look at some numbers get guided by the expert here from pxg and see where we end up at the end of all this right we're going to start proceedings off i've got the 0311t so that's the tour model so this is the slightly more compact head uh, the weakest loft out of these four, this is a 32 degree 7 iron, so very much in and around the sort of traditional lofts. Um, one thing I notice, I think I'll throw some images up of this club right now. I think it's hard to argue that the PXG clubs look absolutely fantastic. They're stunning to look at. There's no doubt about that. And they're quite different than what's out there as well, which are very much a standout product, this. The interesting thing for me with this model in particular, I don't know whether this happens throughout the set, but at address, what they've done very cleverly, there's a camera on the top line, which in a player's eye and somebody who likes that sort of really thin top line, they've managed to produce that with this camera that slides off the back. And when you sit it behind the ball, it does appear very, very compact. And I've got to say for me visually, as you well know, whether I have the capability to play player's irons is debatable, but it's certainly the kind of iron that I like to look down upon anyway. Um, again, minimal offset on this particular model and that offset changes as you go through to the super game improvement iron as does the loft as well which starts to get just a little bit stronger i think it's one degree worth of loft added as we move through to the uh, the sgi set at some point in a second or two i've got set up with the um, the standard shaft that i would use so it's a d dynamic gold um s300 120 stiff We'll see how this goes, have a look at some numbers and uh, then see what I'm advised to do next after seeing what happens very, very shortly. So that's it. Let me get into some golf balls. Right, so we've just hit, or I've just hit rather, um, same club head, so this is still the tour head. Um, three different shafts, so we started with my, like I said, Dynamic Gold uh, 120 stiff. Uh, we moved into the NS Pro shaft, and we just tried a, um, a S taper. KBS S taper. KBS S taper. Basically comes to the conclusion that um, 
our middle shaft which is what we're going to go with now which is the uh, ns pro shaft uh, lawrence here is just uh, he's the guy from pxt who's helping me out today expert with his knowledge and this fit we're going to try the uh, p which is the players model yeah. um so i'll have a quick i'll give you my opinion on that very very shortly when we sit behind the ball same shaft different club head and we'll see how the numbers get up now now i'll go through the numbers at the end of the video and i'll give you my overall sort of opinion okay so fire up on screen now this is the uh 0311p so that's the player's model if you look at the bottom of the club i'll put the two images up actually from where we've gone from the tour to the player's model you'll see the width of the sole uh slightly different uh and slightly wider with this um with this player's model and that top line when you sit the club head behind the ball slightly more bulky uh, not a great deal more di uh, difference i can still see there is that camber um, cut away off that top line so it still sits very neat and compact behind the ball from a confidence perspective it's probably slightly chunkier like i would say than the than the tour model as you would expect and don't forget one degree uh, more loft in terms of uh, the kind of offset it's supposed to change i can't see anything vis visually uh, with my eye at least anyway um, but once again hit some golf balls and uh, have a look how it performs with the player's head in place again what i'd say with that is is that second ball first ball pretty much nailed for me second ball weaker shot poor swing but again still delivered half decent performance and i think that's the key that we look at and again one of the big things with pxg again is this kind of help across the whole of this club face um this core two that they've got injected inside of these club heads is very much about support right across that club face and i see that's the kind of thing i've noticed when it's almost better to see what it does when you hit the bad shots than what you do when you hit the good ones and again only four yards difference so that's the information that's just been fed back don't forget i haven't seen the screen i'm telling you what i'm seeing out there uh visually from the shot i hit there was only four yards difference between those two shots and believe me um swing type and what i just put club head on ball they were massively different so that's nice to see Right, okay, so already noticed a difference between the first two heads that we use. I'm now going to try this XF, which is extra forgiveness. Before I go on to that, one thing I want to point out, and I'll, uh, I've just noticed, I'll put some images up on screen. I talked about the possibilities of blending sets, so having maybe the longer irons, maybe from the XF, for example, and then your shorter irons from the P or the T range. One thing they've done, which sits nicely in the bag, is the logo positioning profile of the head looks very, very similar well it's identical in terms of logo positioning so sat in the bag it's very much a streamlined set of clubs that you will end up with even though they might be from different ranges uh, from pxc so that's a nice little touch as well so into this xf range straight away you notice the overall profile as you'd expect just gets that little bit bigger again as does the top line but very minimal as i look down now not an overly uh, big club profile I think even to the next iron that we're possibly going to have a look at, which is the Super Game Improvement iron, they've really worked on the aesthetics of these clubs. They look stunning, whichever model you go for. So, like I said, right down to the Tour model, up to the SGI, they still manage to maintain what is a real... I, I think it's hard to argue. These look really, really nice. And so far, we're seeing performance to match it, Lee. So I'll put this one down and let's try if, this, uh, if we get an extra bit of forgiveness from the average for the average golfer. Uh, might do a bit of a trick. Uh, three balls in, and I'll just stop there for a second. Um, don't forget, I mentioned at the beginning of the video, and I'm, I'm not 100% um, this is accurate, but I think it's 30 degrees now we're lofted at um, from the XF set. And straight away, that stronger uh, loft I think this is visibly seems to be going out there a little bit further and for me the interesting thing is like i said right from the first club that we used not massively different in visuals from that top line don't get me wrong this has got a thicker top line but i'd certainly be more than comfortable um 
with this club in the bag and it feels like from the first three shots that you're just getting so much more assistance I don't know but we'll see in the numbers it's a real matty shot so you see that ball still firing out there I don't think the spin would have dropped off had it yeah yeah you've got four yards between the longest yeah. and the shortest. Is it really? Right, so finally I get to the SGI iron. And maybe a more important fact is the actual iron that is in the bag of Bob Parsons himself. So really interested to know why he's gone with this model. It's aimed at a wide audience. It is again, super game improvement iron. The sole width increases quite significantly, um, as does that thick top line. The actual profile from sort of top to bottom of the club seems to narrow down a little bit, doesn't seem as high behind the ball. Um, it's very much confidence inspiring when it's sat behind the ball, you have got a lot of club head and I am dying to know how this thing performs. Same shaft is in as we've tried now for the, uh, for the last four sets, so let's see how this goes. Well, it's a great start. Again, well, what's interesting, a, a little bit toey in terms of strike, um, but I'd pretty much say this, apart from uh, the tour iron, from then on in, the forgiveness factor, I didn't notice it as much, but the forgiveness in some of these, um, the next three irons that I've hit. This is very little shape. No. This is what amazes me. I might leave this on camera, I might not, but it was what amazes me about the mentality of the modern golfer or any golfer really who kind of like five years ago I would only play a blade, a player's iron, I suppose you'd describe it, because I felt that's what fit into my handicap, let's say then. But you've got a club here, and I must admit, you know, if you, if you if I'd looked at that club five years ago, I wouldn't have thought it was for me. You'd walk straight past it on a shelf. You would, yeah. But, you know, straight away performance-wise, you're like, why are you making this game any harder than it already is? You know, when it's... So this is a brand new product, by the way, this one, isn't it? Brand yeah, new. brand new. Um, I, and I don't know numbers, by the way, yet. Don't forget, I don't know numbers. I've just... Uh, obviously, I can, I can see what I can see. the worst shot that I've hit stopping and talking and I can assure you it's not done bad it would not be uh, my best numbers in terms of what it's done but uh, yeah really impressive well also this is going there's 11 longer yeah I was going to say and there's no very in terms of stability of flight there's very no there's very little left or right on it at all is there Right, that's the final um, club head out of the four types. What I'm going to do, because it's a very busy day here at Fog, I've got lots of people coming in and out ready for the next fitting. So what I'll do, I'll get the numbers off Florence and I'll sit back down in the office and we'll go through the numbers and talk about performance. But what I do want to say just at the very end there is that probably for me, I didn't think I would get on anywhere near as well as I just have done with that club there. The performance out of that was unbelievable. It's not my best swinging day, to be fair, and uh, the ball has performed far better than it should have done from the, some of them swings I put on it, I'll tell you. So I'm, I'm impressed with that. Thanks to Lawrence, thanks to PXG. I'll have a look at the numbers and then do my assessment. You'll have to watch that a bit later, mate, and see what, the, see what the overall assessment is. Right, so I'll see you back at the office and we'll go through the numbers. Okay, so that's all shots hit. Um, I've had this is the following day, so I've had uh, 24 hours to mull this one over, and um, real interesting test for me because, as I said in the beginning of this video, we always talk about price with PXG products, and it's really difficult to avoid because they are so much more expensive 
than the sort of standard product range that's out there. They make no excuses about that. They say that they make the best product that's out there quality components, all the rest of it. So they really are not ashamed or embarrassed by the price tag. Um, however, for me to do a review of the product, I just wanted to wipe the whole price thing away from my mentality and just test the club for what it is in terms of performance. Overall impression in a nutshell would be very, very good. Totally impressed with every product that I tried in those four irons, but let's break it down and take a closer look at some numbers. And then as I say, I'll give you my overall evaluation of this product range. And I started off, as you all know, with the tour product. And the first thing I'm gonna throw up is the data of the shots that I hit with the 120 motor shaft. Uh, but also before we do that, let me just show a quick chart which shows dispersion. And you'll see that the shots that are Furthest left, if you like, so highest up on the screen, the sort of purple colour, they are the shots that I hit with the um, with the Modus 120 in the Tor model. Now, I'll also throw up the data. I hit the most shots uh, with this particular product at where we started off from. Look at the numbers. Um, club head speed, 85, 117 ball speed, spinning at 5.4, really affected by shot number four, which was a real thin job, and we kept uh, 3.754, which, like I said, that's really had a dent in the spin rate, which I think would have been a close up to that 6,000 number. So a really good spin number should have been with that one taken out. Launching at 19.3, don't forget this is lofted at uh, a traditional-ish loft at 32 degrees at this end. Um, carrying it in and around 168.8, all those shots again, front to back, very, very tight numbers. And I have to say, very much what I've seen over the last year or so, it performed really, really well. Don't forget, I'm a nine handicap golfer, the tour model, as this pans out and as we start to look closer at these numbers shows that the tour model probably isn't for me certainly not across the board maybe get away with the shorter irons but then really why would i go down that route and make life more difficult but as you can see from the spread of shots that i shown earlier on spade it about a little bit but numbers very very consistent in terms of spin apart from that one shot and front to back numbers it was a good start but then we moved on to the players club and once again i'll show up this little chart that shows you and reminds you of this dispersion of shots first of all so what you're looking at is the purple dots and you can see with the players club we only get limited numbers same shaft but as you can see from the purple numbers very very tightly grouped indeed Here's their numbers in terms of dry ball data. So once again, slightly slower in club head speed uh, than what we've just seen. So one mile an hour slower in club head speed, but ball speed was actually up by one mile an hour. Spin number was exceptional for me. Again, I'm a low spinner of the golf ball in terms of a seven iron. So six one spin was excellent. Um, launching again, uh, higher than the 32 degree lofted. So again, slightly uh, unusual there. Peak height 106, carrying 168.6. And again, the spread of front to back, very, very tight indeed. But once again, only spread over the four shots. So minimal, again, same shaft. But again, I think yeah, the pattern that you see first and foremost is the consistency. We've gone from two clubs, the dispersion left and right has now got tighter with the player's iron as opposed to the tour but the front to back numbers again have remained very very consistent so then i went on to the xf xf is the extra forgiving extra forgiveness uh, head model again slightly bigger now as i explained but by no means off putting once again let me throw up this chart that shows the um the dispersion this is where it starts to get really interesting you see those red numbers they're literally sat on top of one another it is really really tightly packed and i think again it's worth noting again at this point that i didn't it wasn't my best swinging day by a long way let me tell you but these are the numbers that started to get really impressive 85 club head speed again stronger lofted so don't forget there's some change in loft here that will affect things now ball speed goes up to 119 on average Spinning at 5.4, still plenty respectable. Take a couple of those out of there in the 4,000. And again, that's still perhaps creeping up to even would have been sort of five, eight, six thousand, which would be more than sort of satisfied. 
peak height still getting right up there in terms of height 100 um, feet in height carry distance now starts to creep up 173.2 uh, and apart from one shot that really dropped off at 166 they were tightly packed between 172 and 177 in terms of front to back numbers so as you can see all of a sudden the xf model produced some really really tight and consistent numbers overall it performed extremely well the xf, XF model and it was a very much a happy medium of a sort of like i said that the club head got bigger but you can clearly see there that from a consistency of performance for me with a variation in strike pattern that will have no doubt gotten from the club head we're starting to see some balls very tightly packed front to back numbers very very tight indeed so it was then onto the final model which was the SGI the super game improvement model this is the club don't forget that I said that's used by Bob Parsons so that's what he's chose to put in his bag I said in the video very big sole small shallow face very very thick top line it was a like I said never a club I would have picked up decided to try it as part of trying the four irons and I have to say as you know from the performance on the video my response really impressed with this in terms of how it performed because in a lot of ways I perform worse in terms of my um, shots personal strike pattern and again the performance I got out of it was exceptional to be quite honest I'll put the spread of shots up first of all now it's the blue dots arguably we've leaked a couple out to the left but again the remainder of the shots all packed on top of one another in and around that sort of uh, centre line or plenty centre enough for me so you've got four shots packed grouped quite tight around that centre line here's the numbers in terms of the data club head speed was 86.2 again reminder of the stronger loft 122 ball speed so from the first seven iron to the last seven iron in the pack and again a lot to do with the strength of the loft we've gone up to 122 ball speed that's five mile an hour almost faster in ball speed incredible spin number for such a product five six spin I would from this type of product it was an incredible spin number for me um, launch at 17.8 so slightly lower in launch because of like I said that affection affecting of the loft and height again peak height was still 101 so right up there and a 178 carry and again those numbers all reflective of the stronger loft but stronger loft with a good spin number which is the one that surprised me as much as anything and like I said surprised me in terms of performance more than any of the other clubs that were that I actually hit um, now overall assessment how do I put this one across to the average golfers because it's a damned if you do damned if you don't situation this one for me when you do review it's gonna be a lot of comments that make reference to the price of the clubs but what I'm going to say is this these clubs performed as good if not better than any other iron that I have played and tried in the last couple of years and I'll tell you why they did they in terms of spin number exceptional in terms of carry distance about where they'd be but we're not talking about massive gains here we're talking about relative distances relative carries to relative lofts so nothing major in terms of distance for me forgiveness certainly changed throughout the set but even down at the bottom end there's plenty of forgiveness and stability across that club face so consistent performance across the club face and that happened throughout every model but certainly down that xf and sgi unbelievable but these are forged heads and they have incredible feel and I think that I mentioned in a video in the last few days that I did the last video that I did on the i500 model from ping I made a reference that manufacturers are getting closer to the ultimate situation by where you have a compact club head a nice looking aesthetically good club head so a player's club head with the forgiveness of an SGI and then I said ping are getting close but they fell down in terms of feel with that hollow body now this core two if that's what's making all the difference tick that one final box for me 
in that we've got ultra forgiveness, we've got great performance, we've got great spin, we've got great distance, and couple that with unbelievably good feel. And that's why I cannot do anything other than tell you that the PXG clubs were absolutely fantastic. I can't sit here and just, I know the price thing is an issue, but these clubs are exceptional performers. The four irons that I tried, which one I choose or pick to play, let's put that out the window for the time being, the fact is these clubs tick, every one of them boxes I've just mentioned, they tick, end of story. That is, you cannot argue with that, and that's the only thing I can relate back to you in a review. They ticked every box. What would I be critical of? I'll tell you what I'd be critical of, the price. We'd be back down at the beginning. But in terms of performance, I cannot criticize. You can see the numbers, you know my numbers. Um, and I, honestly, seriously, it was a bad day in terms of swinging. I didn't hit that ball anywhere near as good as I can do. Um, and they still left me with this. And, I, and the feeling that they've left me with is this. I managed to try four products. They've got fairways, hybrids, drivers, driving irons, wedges, putters. I cannot wait to get the opportunity to try all of those products. I can't wait to try the driving iron. Because if they've managed to get that, eight seven iron obviously, if they've managed to get that sort of softness of feel, that performance, that forgiveness packed into a driving iron, then oh, I'm just gonna be I mean, the only thing I'll be gutted about is that, unfortunately, these are, without doubt, the Lamborghini of golf clubs. And I don't have Lamborghini money, I'm afraid, so they won't end up in my bag, as they won't with a lot of other people. But I ain't gonna be bitter and twisted about it. There's a lot of things I can't afford in life, but that's just the way it is. And uh, these clubs, good luck to anybody who can afford them. And if you're that way inclined, then save your pennies and have a go because they they're, they're really are worth it. I think the bottom line is I'm gonna end here. And I say this, if the irons were put on the table that are out there right now, and somebody said to me, and take your pick, it's up to you, forget, you ain't paying for nothing, you take your pick, what clubs do you want? I'd pick a set of these PXG irons to put in my bag. There you go, end the review. Like, comment, Give me your feedback. Thank you to PXG. Thank you to Lawrence and to Rebecca. They've even got the best business cards I've ever seen. That's the business card. How cool is that? PXG, thank you very much. Thanks for letting the average golfer have a test of your product. I look forward to trying more of it, as I said, in the months ahead. That's me signed off. And uh, subscribe if you don't already. And see you very, very soon.